Welcome to Art with Lorian, the place to reconnect with your divine inner artist and discover the joy of painting outside the lines. Welcome to my Foundations series, episode 15. 15 episodes of foundational classes on the basics of art making. We are focusing on so many amazing things that are the building blocks for many, many different art projects and for an infinite number of possibilities in the realm and the field of possibilities to create. So welcome, thank you for joining me, and I'm excited to share this session with you um, where we will be exploring pattern, the principle of design called pattern. And we'll be doing that through a really fun doodling exercise. And so let's get started. I'm going to introduce the materials for this class that you will require. Um, some are optional, some you will definitely require some version of it. And again, I always list all of the materials in the description and they're also on my website and you can access that through this video as well. And so you will require, um, I'm using Bristol board. It's a, it's a hundred pound we've, a paper. We've used it many times before. It's a smooth paper. I use a sheet of Bristol board and then I cut it. So I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, you may require your gouache if you use one of my modifications and options for you for this particular project, this activity. So your gouache paints. Um, I'm using a, a wide brush today. Kind of a, it's like a utility brush. It's a, it's a, it's basically, it's a, um, yeah, it's like a two inch brush, maybe one and a half. Uh, broad bristles and um, palette knife maybe your palette spray bottle to kind of you know juice up your gouache paint and you will require a pencil I'm using a mechanical pencil I'm also using another pencil for shading as an option and this is a I believe it's a two it's either a 2b or a, one second, there it is. It's a 2B, so it's a pretty soft pencil. Just a basic graphite pencil, any brand will do. Um, and I have my eraser handy, just in case. Sharpener for the pencil. And I do have my uh, stump. We've used these before. We used the stumps in, um, I think the last episode, maybe use them for shading and you'll definitely uh, for the cutting you require either scissors or um, I use an exacto knife and my cutting boards so these are optional if you use scissors you can use scissors as well and and a ruler to make your line so um, to cut the paper and then last but not least very important is a ultra fine marker and this is an ultra fine point sharpie uh, there's many brands out there. There's uh, the main idea is that it's ultra fine, that it's very uh, small point. It's a fine point. So I'm using this one. There's a lot of brands. Whatever you prefer, whatever you have. Let's start on the project. You're going to have your paper. You're going to have your Bristol board, a sheet of Bristol board. Okay, and you're going to cut squares out of this Bristol board. Now my square or just one square, but I, I have four. And um, they are seven inches by seven inches. So you can use any size you like. I like the dimensions of seven by seven. And it works well with the size paper. So you basically want a square, I'd say on the average between five to eight inches, okay, in uh, square inches. So seven by seven, five by five, eight by eight, six by six, which, whichever you prefer. And you're basically gonna have one, two, as many sheets as you want. You may wanna continue doing this. If you um, cut this paper, you know, you, it's easy just to do the four, and that's what I did. And so I measured it, made my lines, made my cut, and voila. And so for this particular episode, I'm gonna be showing two variations on how we will be um, doing this doodling project. Okay, so the first variation is just to use the white paper. You can use the white Bristol board as is and not paint it. And the second variation is to give it a background. So um, I painted this one blue already. It's dry. 
and I'll be using that, but I'm going to show you how to do it if you choose to have a colorful background for your doodle. Um, so, you take your, your paper, you have it here, you have your paint palette. I already squirted some turquoise paint on here, it was already on here from something else and I like it. And as you know, gouache is a very uh, rich paint that comes back to life with water, it rejuvenates and with hydration. So I just thought, oh I'm not going to waste this paint, I'd like to just use it. So I sprayed it, I got my brush wet, I have my water here, and I'm going to do a light wash, a very light wash using my brush and some and it's loaded up with my gouache here. So that's what I'm gonna say. You don't have to do this. This is one of the options and this is just a light gouache. Now it does look kind of rich and beautiful <laughs> and, and kind of dark and there's a way to, to lighten it. One way is to get the brush clean, get rid of all that extra paint in there. Kind of squeeze the brush out and that'll sop up some of that other paint in case it's too vibrant. It's, it's like we're painting a pastel or a tint, a transparent kind of tint of the color. And, you know, you may want to have newspaper underneath you or your plastic, not your cutting board like I do, but I'm gonna wipe it off. Yeah, so just like a real even wash. And of course, you know, not touching it with your fingers helps. So that leaves little fingerprints. But um, you have to kind of, there's an art to doing this. <laughs> so I'm gonna just put a fingernail here to hold it down. And then if you choose to do a color background, and the idea is to get it nice and even and smooth, so go in one direction and stay in that direction. Or, I mean, because you want to keep the background plain and solid, but have a nice, uh, pretty, vibrant color as your background against the contrast will be the black marker. Okay, so just do your best to get a nice, even background going edge to edge, and then stop. And so if you choose to do a paint, a painted version, a background version, you're going to let that dry, pause the video now, and come back and then do the doodling with me. Um, but th this will have to dry. So I'm going to just set this off to the side. And also, what will happen is it will, um, see how it's, 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 it was lifted? So after it dries, I put a book on this. I put a cookbook on top of this, a hardcover book. And I let that face down on some newspaper. I let that sit there um, all day or for a few hours when I was doing something else. So have it dry, flat, and you can do your doodling. Or if you want to keep it simple and have a black and white, just use your white. And so now for the doodling. So what you're going to do is you're going to use your pencil. I'm using a mechanical pencil. It doesn't need to be one, but I'm having fun with this new pencil and you're going to start this doodle by making four dots very lightly and I'm going to hold it up and show you four dots okay so there's four little dots here you might not see them then you're going to draw the lines and make like a frame now what this does is it gives a border to the art you don't have to do this little box but I'm going to do it. I think it's fun. And I'm going to do it. So now I'm going to draw in lightly. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a rough sketch. So in other words, no need for a ruler. I'm just going to bring in these lines, connect the lines. Like that. And now I have like a little wavy kind of loose little frame inside of the parameters, the frame of my paper. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two kind of random lines across the paper. And there's lots of ways to do this, thousands of ways to do this. So I'm just going to draw a couple of lines that transverse the paper. And here they are. Just two lines that go diagonal. 
And what'll happen is these pencil marks will disappear with the use of the marker. The marker will kind of obliterate these. So let's begin. So I'm gonna take my pen and I'm gonna draw a line diagonal from one dot in the corner here, the bottom corner, left corner, up until this little, um, this little point here. It's like a little point, like a wave point. So I'm gonna take this line Oops, one second. Okay, my pen stopped. Okay, my pen wasn't working. All right, I'm gonna take that line like that. And I'm gonna put a little bit of extra ink on the end there. So you can see that. And then, I'm gonna to go to this little point and draw up to the left. So that was to the right, this is to the left, and I'm gonna put a little ink here. And then I'm gonna come from the point and go to the right and put a little bit of ink. And then I'm gonna go from this point up to the left. So it's like your alternating directions and it's you're kind of swinging to one side and then the other side and this is so this type of doodling I mean it's gonna get wild in a minute in other words I'm gonna uh, change the you'll see change the patterns and but this kind of doodling is super relaxing. It's therapeutic. But we're creating a pattern, too. There's some thought behind it. OK, so that's one. And then I'm going to turn the paper upside down and do the same thing from the other side. So I'm going to go up here. like that <clears throat> and do my little weight and then like that like that and then like oops and like that and then like that So these are straight lines, with a little bit of, of energy here. In other words, that little weighted part, that little extra, extra ink. <clears throat> Let's see here, and I'm gonna fill in this part. And so you're basically just filling in So it's like filling in the, the negative space with lines. I'm gonna flip it around again. I'll bring this up here. So I kind of have a plan, but not really. I know I'm gonna be doing straight lines. I know I'm gonna be doing some curvy lines in a minute. Okay, and so now I have other spaces to fill, and that's just a little tiny pattern. So now I'm gonna go down here and make some like really big curvy kind of leaves. And then put the little stem. And then out from here, I'm gonna do one. Put a little thing. And then out from here, I'm gonna do one. They're kind of like leaf paste leaves. Well, kind of but they're curvy lines, kind of organic. And then in the negative space, I'm gonna put some circles. And these circles are gonna to touch and they're gonna to be all different sizes. Some might even be kind of oval. But they're complete circles. And I mean, this is, 
touching, but there's some space around them too. So I'm gonna just make sure I do a complete circle and not do any half circles, just for fun. So this is a pattern. When you repeat a line or a shape, whether it's organic or geometric, it turns into a pattern. So I'm just doing different sizes of circles, filling in the negative space. And so it's really up to you. You can Google uh, motifs. You can, there's multicultural, there's all kinds of different cultural motifs that, you know, the Greeks and the Islamic and the Roman and the, you know, every culture has decorative motifs for their, their arts and crafts. Especially the Greeks were really big on ornamentation. So you can, if you look at the Greek vases, there's a lot of pattern uh, motifs and you can really find so much out there if you just start Googling motif, the word motif. I mean, you could do anything, leaves, flowers, uh, I mean, the sky's the limit. So my, my goal, my intention with this activity was to combine curvy lines and straight lines to create patterns. And so this is what I have so far. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here with my inking. And um, as you can see, the, the pencil marks are, they're, well, I don't know if you can see, but I can see they're virtually gone. Um, if they bother you, that's what you have your eraser for. You can kind of you know, just go in and, and erase that frame and that little dot real lightly, of course, if you're using your uh, painted version. And, the dot is just there for reference to kind of get you started with those lines. And then the next step is to take your, um, this is optional but kind of fun, take your 2B pencil and do a little bit of shading. And I'm going to use the side of it and just go right along here. This will give, just on one of my patterns, it'll give it a little dimension. So I'm gonna go on the outside here, and then here. And this is where that tortillion's gonna to come in handy. And you can do it really anywhere. I mean, I think I also might come in. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. Yeah, I'm just gonna do an example. So I'm gonna take my tortillion, and, or not my tortillion, my stump. They also sell tortillions that are rolled paper. This is a stump, this stump. And I'm gonna blend that pencil so it smooths out my shading and kind of moves it. You can also use your finger if you don't have a stump or tortillion. And yeah, this will give it just a little bit more dimension. This is another fun variation and and doing this kind of doodle work and gives it some interest and uh, you don't have to have these tools the stumps of the tortillions. Um, I think they're fun and useful. And you can use your finger always to blend. And I'm gonna actually just take off a little bit more of this pencil line here. And I think that's gonna be a wrap. Um, again, you can do a white version. You can do a color version. Yours will look totally different than mine, I hope. Um, but I hope this doodly exercise was fun for you. The main idea was to explore patterns. Patterns are found in nature. 
They're used a lot in textile design, in surface design, fabrics and wallpapers and I mean, everywhere. Paper, you know, there's thousands of uses and applications that we see in the world in design of patterns. So it's something really fun to be aware of, to play with. And you know, this is kind of almost dry actually. It actually it's a little wet, but it did end up kind of lying flat. So I can go ahead and do another one on here. Um, but I hope you enjoy your experience with me today. Thank you for watching and for viewing and for supporting this channel. And I encourage you to continue watching. We have a few more foundation series episodes coming up and some more tools of the trade. And so thank you again for joining me. And until next time, we'll see you in the studio.